So hi everybody, I'm Marie Jenkins from Advance Your Wellbeing and welcome to my podcast, The Secret Diary of Marie Jenkins 47 Plus. Now today we have got the wonderful Jane Brooks from House of Colour. Hi Jane. Hi Marie, thank you for having me on, this is exciting. It's very exciting but you're quite skilled at being a guest on podcasts anyway. <laughs> I am. I have been on a couple of podcasts recently and I've got my own podcast as well with um, a very dear friend of mine, another consultant called Claire Bannister and we are Strong Women Need Friends. Yes, I saw that. It's a very strong brand image you've got there with the two <laughs> frames of glasses. So uh, how's your podcast going anyway? It's going really well. We've been doing it for a year now. So um, we've got <laughs> a steady core it's it's just something we do for fun I don't know about you but we love it's a great opportunity to sit down and have a chat with a friend and make sure you do it rather than it just going oh, I'll catch up with you next week we know we have to have a catch up because it's going out on a podcast <laughs> so it's <laughs> ideal. I love it. <laughs> it it is that it is that isn't it it's, it's an opportunity yes. to, to connect and and have these conversations and then hopefully adding value to your audience while you go so Anyway, we're, we're jumping straight in there, Jane. Tell me who you are and what it is you do. Well, my name's Jane Brooke. I am a personal stylist. I work with uh, within a franchise organisation called House of Colour, who are a UK company who've been going for, gosh, over 30 years now. And we have um, consultants in America, Dubai, Greece, uh, Belgium. We have them all around the world. Not, I would say all around the world, but we have them in various different countries. <laughs> but we are a UK based company. I've been with House of Colour for nearly 11 years now. Ooh. And I know it's flown past. We were going to have big celebrations last year for my 10 year anniversary. But of course, COVID and lockdown all put paid to that. But never mind. Well, you, can re you can revisit that, can't you, at some time in the future? <laughs> Although I know a lot of people have been having these kitchen discos, which I'm quite intrigued about. <laughs> Well, actually, if I mean, you should say that um, when it, we every year we have an annual House of Colour conference and every year we have a disco and an awards um, evening at that. And this year, obviously, we couldn't have one. So we had a virtual conference and I was in charge of the disco. So I had to do a Zoom disco for all the consultants, which was great fun. So I had a party in my you studio. <laughs> you totally experienced all this online uh, <laughs> switching of businesses then, Jane, I'd say. It, yeah, it was, I mean, it was, it was tough at first because so much of my business is face to face, you know, being a personal stylist, I, I see people, I, I work out, work with them to discover how they want to be presenting themselves. Um, we work out a color palette that really reflects, flatters, makes them look trustworthy. Um, and um, I do all that face to face. I take them shopping, I go through their wardrobes and I was doing everything face to face. And of course, all of a sudden we just couldn't. <laughs> so I moved everything online apart from the one thing you cannot do accurately online is you cannot ac uh, analyze someone's skin tone i need them here with me um if you think about it logically when you buy how often have you bought something online got it home and it's a completely different color to what you saw on the screen so yeah it's the same it's the shade isn't it yeah it is and it's shades and i'm, I'm looking at tiny tiny little differences and you can't see that on the screen so um but everything else has gone online so i'm now um online styling i'm online shopping i'm running big online programs um for my clients um so we're doing at the moment we're in the middle of a four week workout uh wardrobe workout challenge which is fantastic i've got 70 clients going through that um so yeah so it's 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 changed it but it's actually been an opportunity i think i think We've missed out on a lot of online. I've got a lot of clients who have travelled a long way to see me, so um, they will they will they will travel to whichever consultant they, they choose, and this has enabled them to keep in touch with me a lot more easily because they can just zoom. I can zoom into their wardrobes, Absolutely. or we can have an update rather than them having to travel. So it's it's opened up my business rather than closed it down. I think I think you've got to think positively about these things. We've got it, so let's let's use what we've got. Absolutely, and embrace using the technology to offer a range of things that are better for customers. Ultimately, you're saving them travel time, which you know everybody wants to be able to make up more hours in the day. So yeah, it's fantastic. We we were speaking off podcast earlier about um, image and 
being on Zoom. Uh, yes. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? I mean, I tend to wear dungarees or spots or bright colours, but can you give a bit of advice to people that are listening in if they're going on Zooms, how they can stand out? Well, you, you, you're right. What you're doing by instinct is actually is very good, Marie, um, because basically on Zoom, you are just one little square. So you need to make your square visible. So the first thing I say is, A, you're doing really well because you've got your banner behind you. Um, we're recording this on Zoom for those who don't know, even though it's an audio podcast. So you've got your <laughs> banner, so I know exactly what you do behind you. And you've obviously cleared off the worktop behind you. So many people leave so many things out. Um, so it's just about making sure your background's clear or representing what you want it to represent because that's one of the pluses of Zoom is you are Zooming and, and half the time you are looking to see what people have got behind them, aren't you? <laughs> 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 but uh, make sure that you are wearing something that, that is, is, is more colourful. You know, you, I'm, I'm in a lime green. I know it's an amazing colour for me, but it, it does make me stand out on screen. If you wear glasses, make sure that, again, they're a frame that is doing something for you, not just disappearing into the background of your face. Um, it's about... Within the sort of styling, I will often talk about your communication zone, which is what is visible on Zoom. It is basically your head and shoulders. So be, be thinking about that. Be thinking about the messages you want to convey. So do you want to be seen as formal? If so, keep a jacket on your chair, slip it on if you're going to be on a Zoom. Um, if you are, are working from home and you're in loungewear or, or jamas all day, <laughs> just have a jacket and a scarf and then you can just cover that up so it's you know it's those kinds of things women wear makeup wear makeup your the zoom screens will wash you out the, the, the computer screens will wash you out so i've got a couple of clients who are actually um on tv and you have to wear more makeup when you're on screen than oh. when you're in real life so just put a bit more makeup on put a lipstick on it draws attention to your your mouth and then gives the impression that the words you are saying are almost more important because you're not blanking yourself out. So just those kinds of things, make sure that your hair is groomed um, and, and, you know, just make sure that when you, you, you always check yourself out before you go live. And obviously there's the pitfalls to assume that I really uh, avoid, that I really hope people are avoiding. Don't take your laptop with you if you go to the toilet and you're on a Zoom, you know, those kinds of things. <laughs> Oh, well, well, I think there's some really fantastic tips there. And yeah, I totally, I get that about the makeup. But what I would say, Jane, is you've always been somebody that massively wears statement jewellery and been an advocate for wearing. I remember when I first come and um, heard you talk at Find It in Worcestershire and you did this amazing talk uh, key keynote speech about you know your image and you had this you know fantastic jewelry on and you you know you took everything off and sort of it showed us visually the massive impact of your image so I noticed you've got some fabulous earrings on earrings in so for those people that are listening in today she's got like these well, what would you call them? They're like a peachy colour, are they? They're, they're orange because orange is a, is a great colour for me. They're made by one of my clients, actually. I tend to support my clients as much as I can. So my glasses are from one of my clients. My um, <laughs> earrings were made for me. So they're almost like sort of um, diamonds shaped, really. Um, big pendants. My scale for jewellery and accessories is large. So that isn't the same for everybody. So it's not a case of everyone should wear massive impact jewellery. You know, when I'm styling someone, I will look at their proportions. It may be I've got a reasonable amount of space so I can have hair and jewellery. If you're quite short, you might not have as much space. So you might need to keep things a bit smaller. Uh -huh. It's very much an individual um, process. You can, like, you, you know, you read in the papers, this suits everybody, but something else will suit you better. It's about, yes, you, that's, that's fine, but let's go for top notch rather than fine I don't want to be fine I don't know about you but yeah <laughs> I want to be amazing every day. <laughs> absolutely if you're going on a zoom you're going there with a purpose so you want to be able to stand out so yeah your image your right makeup I'm sorry I interrupted you I was going to say and stand out for the right reasons it's very easy to go on a zoom and stand out for the wrong reasons but stand out for the right reasons it is what you want to do. You want people to go, oh, look, yes, I can see you in the corner. Not, oh, God, were you there? I didn't see you at all. 
<laughs> or worse, oh gosh, did you see what so and so was wearing? Because like it or not, this is this is what it comes down to. This is your personal brand. And whether you like it or not, you have a personal brand. People will refer to you in a certain way. So for you, it might be, oh Marie, you know, and they're saying, who's Marie? You know, she always wears dungarees. So yeah. that becomes part of yeah. how people now go, oh yes, I recognize you. Whereas they go, oh, can you remember Peter? And you're like, oh, he's Peter. Well, he always wears a really dull top and his hair always looks a bit unkempt. And, um, you know, his ties always, oh, I know who he is. Um, that's not your personal brand you really want, is it? So. Well, Nicholas, Nicholas Lee is one of those gentlemen that always springs to mind because he always wears a super bright dicky bow tie. Does, and yes. when we was face to face networking, you know, so many gentlemen dress very formally, which, you know, absolutely. And they've all got suits on. But like you're saying, when, when you're networking and you speak to many people, it's those people that stand out. And for me, it's Nicholas with his dicky bow tie. I can, I can always visually see him with that dicky bow. It's, it's, it's incredibly clever, really, isn't it? It is. It's 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 very. It's all about sort of subconscious, unconscious messaging. Um, when I I used to do a lot of networking, as you know, I very I very rarely network now. But um, apparently, we can only remember. So if you said to, if you said to me or I said to you, can you can you recommend me a financial advisor? You could probably only really remember three. So the financial advisor's job is to be one of those three. So Nicholas Lee is doing a great job because you'd be like, all right, yeah, Nicholas Lee, because he's there. He's in yeah. your mind. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's your job as a business owner to make your brand strong enough that you are one of those three in everyone's mind. Yeah. Um, so, and the way, an easy way to do that, that is missed in so much marketing is to market yourself. All I do is help you market yourself. People spend a fortune on websites, on business cards, on branded <laughs> goods, on banners, and then they rock up and they're totally incongruent with that. I work with them to go, right, okay, let's look at you. Who are you? What do you represent? What do you want to achieve? What impact do you want? And then we work to get that right for that person. And it is a very individual one-to-one -one service that I offer. Okay, so can I, can I drill in a bit deeper on that then? So for those people that are looking to start up their own business and have those one-to-one -one sessions with you, is it a program? Is it like a number of weeks? What's that? Talk me through that. It can be how you how you want it. I work with, on a number of different levels. At the moment, especially with COVID, I, and I tend to, I've got an associate in my business, so we do split work quite a bit. I tend to work one-to-one -one with, with business owners and individuals. So um, I would suggest that a, for a one-to-one, -one, somebody would come to me for half a day, that's all, half a day, three quarters of a day, and we go through it all. I would send out a pre-session questionnaire. They would then come here. We'd look at a palette of colors that suit them and how they're going to wear them. So what kind of impact? I, I wear colors from what we call the autumn palette, but I wear very bright colors. So I wear them in my way. It's about all about the individual. If you're a woman, we'll go through what makeup will suit you so that you end up with a groomed look. And again, the right makeup doesn't make you look overdone. It doesn't make you look clown-like, it makes you look finished. Um, and then we look at how are, you, how are your clothes going to represent you? What styles of clothes are you going to wear? What is going to flatter your body shape? For men and women, different body shapes need different, different styles of clothing. They also need to end in different places. So it can be very powerful to find what is your, the best length for your jacket to end because some, uh, some lengths will make you look swamped, other lengths will make you look too leggy. We look at, in, in great detail about that. I, and then I look, I teach my clients something called the language of clothes everything you wear is saying something about you yeah. your background your trustworthiness um so we go through all of that so at the end of it they've got this real wraparound of how they're going to look but then it doesn't end there that obviously I, I will follow up with them because there's a lot of information to take in one day but what a lot of my clients do then is they have me on a kind of a retainer scheme and then they pay me monthly and we we update every every six months we'll go we'll maybe do a shop we'll maybe do um a, a look at what they've got in their wardrobe how how are they using it we just keep them updated like any marketing any branding you've got to keep it moving on because especially if you're working in a field where you need to be seen as current and contemporary if your image is looking like you're straight out of 1995 <laughs> it's not what you want to give it looks like your thinking's dated 
So seasonality has always been massive, hasn't it, in fashion? You know, you've, we're coming towards the spring now. I mean, how many times a year would you suggest people sort of revisit their wardrobe and revitalise them or even just give them a zhuzh and add a few pieces? What, what would you say? I would say um, it, it all depends on what impression you want to give. So that's something I discuss on an individual basis. You need to be doing it at least annually. I do mine at least biannually. So I, I always shop. My I, I book my shopping trip in. My next shopping trip, all being well, is the 5th of March. So I will be down and I will be spring summer frying my wardrobe at that point. And then I book another one in, in September. But in between that, I, I mean, I'm always in the shops because I'm always shopping with clients. But I tend to do like um, another couple of shops just to keep keep things current. Not everybody needs to do that. You know, I'm working in the business where I really need to be seen. You'll look at me and go, yes, yeah, she knows what she's doing. I can't afford to look dated and as though I don't know what's current. Most of my clients like to look contemporary, but not fashion led. Yeah, that's that's interesting, actually, because things move at such a fast pace, don't they? If you're being more greener, I should imagine, about your wardrobe and, and you know, your impact, then you want more pieces that are going to sort of take you over a number of seasons. Is that right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's completely right. I mean, we have, we're having a big move to sustainability, which I think is right. And it's what we've always sort of said really you you in, a, in an ideal world you would buy fewer items we've been such victims of fast fashion where we're like oh buy something new buy something new buy something new <laughs> buy fewer items spend more on each item make sure it is perfect for you and wear and wear and wear and wear it and you drive the cost per wear down so actually they're better value than this fast fashion yeah and yeah. you end up with a wardrobe with these investment pieces in that will last you for years and years and years. And then you supplement it seasonally with trends. So you go, yes, well, that, I know that's gonna last me for three years, so I'm gonna spend that on it. So you, I, I very much advocate a, a measured, informed, planned approach to your wardrobe, not, hoo I'm going shopping, let's buy some stuff. <laughs> it's like, okay, where are my gaps? What do I need? How do I wanna be seen? It's very much, um, planned it's not it's not just frittering i advocate that my clients have a budget and we we stick to that budget and we go right how are we going to allocate it we look at what what you spend your time doing um we look at how you want to be seen we look at your body architecture we look at your personality and then we come up with a plan for you it's a very individual process yeah you, you're very clever there jane and you mentioned earlier about doing sort of online and then you were just mm -hmm. talking about physically going to shops and doing shop shopping how have you been able to adapt to, to that because I know you're very clever and you've already doing this type of thing when people are online shopping Do, can you still provide that sort of personal shopping experience I do and I've, I've adapted the online shopping experience because I get my my joy from seeing my clients develop that's I, I tend to work one of the reasons I don't do a lot of networking now is I work with my existing clients. So I've, I've almost not, you know, you, there's always room for more clients. I'm not saying I'm closed my books, but most of my work is taking my clients further. So I have clients who shop regularly. So we moved a lot of it online. And because I get such pleasure from, from seeing them, I came up with an online shopping process where we have an initial Zoom call. We, we chat about what they need, where their gaps are. Um, and bear in mind, I know their wardrobes. Then I go away and shop. Then we have another Zoom call and I go, right, this is what I found for you. What are we gonna... Then they, I send them the list. Then they order. Then we have another Zoom call. And I say, right, try it on. I wanna see what this looks like. So I'm still, I'm still getting, this is all about me. I'm still getting <laughs> my buzz from it. <laughs> so uh, that's how I'm online shopping. I've also just, um, I haven't done it yet, but um, I know we were talking about my, my friend, Kirsty Mack, who, who you've met. Um, we both just invested in a program where we called Shop Share, where we can actually do videos. So I could do a video and, and talk through all the clothes in whistles, for example, or something like that. So that's my next thing that I will be, be wow. rolling out. That's going to be really good. And then the links to whatever I'm talking about will be there and then you can ping in and buy them. So Yeah, and you, you're doing that with Kirsty Mack, did you say? 
not with her we're both doing it we she 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 does it for her clients and i'm going to be doing it for mine but it's a program we've both sort of um invested in at the moment yeah that sounds really good and kirsty might is she house of color as well then but in a different area she is we're a franchise so we have different areas kirsty is actually a, a very very good she's a good friend and um one of my clients she came to me years <laughs> ago and then I was like, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. And <laughs> she has, and she trains, um, unfortunately, just sort of pre-pandemic-y. So it's, it's, been very, it's been a bit trickier for her than me because I'm, I'm well established. But um, she's going great guns and she looks fantastic and she's just really good. She's based in Starbridge, whereas I'm based in Worcester. Right, so. okay, yeah. I saw, I saw the fabulous picture in your January newsletter uh, and there's a fabulous picture of her in there as well. And... I was really enjoying reading about waist, waistbands, <laughs> the, the new thing, but uh, yeah, yeah. Talk, talking about customers then, can you recall a time when you as an image consultant, you've been the most rewarded, you know, like from a transformation perspective? Easily, easily, Marie, there is one that's, that I've, I've got, I mean, I've got, hundreds of stories but this one I still can't quite believe it's just amazing I've got years ago um god it's through BNI you know how these networking groups go and I, and I went to a different networking group and I met this woman there and she's a coach and um she said I need what you do so she came to me and we had a long discussion um, um I, we, I, I, we we analyzed her got to where she needed to be took her shopping and she what a lot of what I do is to do with confidence as well it gives you the confidence to allow yourself to be because you're quite happy with the way you look so you can write concentrate on what you're doing so her business grew but also she said I, she started having doubts about her relationship um and she you know you end up quite confidential and this is fine she's written this down in a um a, a testimonial for me so don't think I'm sharing anything <laughs> with you. um she so she and her partner split at this point and um, a few weeks later, I had a phone call from her ex-partner and he said, oh, he said, I need you. And I said, oh, OK. So I checked with her that she was OK with me working with him because obviously I, I didn't want to affect that. She said, no, no, no. She said, you sort him out and then you, basically he'll be, he'll be off my hands. So I was like, OK, I'll sort him. So he came. We did we did the whole process with him, took him shopping. And then because they'd been together for a number of years, the day after I took him shopping and he bought loads of stuff, we bought for, with this occasion in mind. Um, it was one of her one of her daughter's birthday. So he, he went to the party um, that evening and I got a text from her going, good God, you're good. And I was like, <laughs> Interesting. So he'd obviously brought in, made an impression. And then the next thing I heard a couple of weeks later, I got a text, I'm on the train to London. We're going away for a weekend. Okay, so gradually he got himself back. So the, the clothes may, turned him into the person he had been that, that so many of us lose along the way. We really do, life just gets in the way, we forget about ourselves and then before we know it, we're, we've lost who we are, we're middle-aged, trudging along thinking, well, I used to be that person, but I'm, I'm this now. What? So he found, found himself again. And um, to cut a very long story short, this went on and they got married. Oh, they got together and got married. Yeah. And she said that was because they changed, but they changed back together rather than apart. It was just wonderful. So yeah, that's that's the one that always comes to mind. I just think it's wonderful. That is such a lovely story, Jane. And it's incredible, isn't it? When we think of image, we often think of women, but actually you've just given a, a massive example there of the work that you do with men. I have a lot of male clients, a lot. Um, they do tend to be business owners, managing directors. Um, I have a lot. I have, I have ones who travel up from London um, to see me. I've got quite senior, senior people. Um, yeah, and they, men get it. Women, I don't know, we, we tend to be, we have more emotional connection with our clothes. So we can sometimes find parts of it harder. Men are like, yeah, I can see I look much better in an electric blue shirt. You know what, I'm going to, I have this great conversation once um, I, when I was doing a lot of networking, I was at a, a dinner and there was a lot of my male clients there and a lot of them, you know, 50 blokes in their 50s, big ex-rugby players. And I happened to watch the bar and I overheard one of them going, I'm a winter, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about what colours suited them and it was just perfect. 
I loved it. Um, <laughs> it's, and I think some ways it's more powerful for men because people don't expect them to be able to make such a statement with their clothes. So it really does. This stuff works. Um, it really does. So you just mentioned there the guy had said, "Oh, I'm a winter." So are they? Are they? Are the colours put into different seasons? And yeah, we. That's how we classify them. So all colours, every it is based on size. Every skin tone has a colour. You right. you've got a layer of skin, um, a, a layer of fatty tissue, which is a few layers down. You can't see with the naked eye, um, and the cells in that have either got more yellow in them or more blue. And so is every colour in the world. So what we do is we categorise them into four seasons because some colours have got more yellow yeah. and are bright. Uh, some colours have got more yellow and are a bit softer. Some colours have got more blue and are bright and some colours have got more blue and are a bit softer. So they become spring, autumn, uh, winter, summer. So that's how we categorise it. It's just an easy way of referring to it rather than I'm yellow based and I'm muted. It's yeah. not so catchy as I'm an autumn. Wow, well, okay, so that's interesting. So when they come to you then, can you automatically tell or do you have to try a number of the different shades to, to establish what sort of season they are? You can't, you can't tell. Um, I have 144 pieces of precision dyed nylon in my studio and I use those in different sequences to ascertain whether they've got blue tones in their skin, yellow tones, whether they need bright, whether they need muted. And it's really important that the client in front of the mirror sees that as well as, as, well as yeah. I do. Um, so we, we go through the whole process. And once we've analyzed you, that will never ever change. You don't have to be done again. You will always be whatever season you're analyzed as. Ah, okay. You might wiggle around between them. You might be a met, like at the moment, one of my best colors is this sort of neon lime. In 10 years time, I might be better in mustard. That's the only thing that will change. It'll just, but it'll still be within my palette of colours. Yeah. So really, they need to sort of come along to somebody like you, then really to establish <laughs> what they are, what season they are. Oh, that sounds fascinating. So yeah, we've covered so much today, but I want to know a bit more about who inspires you, Jane. Inspires me. Well, it's it's an interesting one. Lots of people inspire me, and this is going to sound a bit. Tri I'm inspired by people within House of Color, our MD. Um, when I walked in for my interview, um, gosh, eleven years ago, I can remember looking at this woman and thinking, "Wow, you are just amazing." Now she's <laughs> one of my best friends, and we shop together, so that's fantastic. <laughs> I've got other consultants I'm friends with, but I'd say I'd say the, the, this sounds really like I I, I was thinking about this. And it is, it, but it's true. The people who inspire me the most are my daughters. Aww. And it's, it, they inspire me to be the best version of myself so that I'm giving them an example to follow. I don't want them to look at me and think, oh gosh, yeah, but you could have done so much more. I want to do that stuff. So they go, gosh, yes. And, and the best example I've got of that is my elder daughter. She's 20, well, she's 30 next month. Shh, she's not really <laughs> I don't mind, but she's like, I can't be 30. But she, um, she went to uni, um, trained as an accountant. She had a very good job and then looked at the fact that I'd thrown up my accountancy career and gone into this and, and thought, oh, I can do anything. And she just handed a notice in with her boyfriend and they went off traveling the world for a year. And I'm really glad that I inspired her to do that. So by they inspire me to keep pushing so that they will also push and they won't live small lives because I feel like I did for a long time live a small life. That's such a lovely thing to say. That's such a lovely thing to say because quite often, you know, you, you think of, oh, it's this person or that person and really it's quite often somebody closer to home and, and if you can inspire your kids to be better people, then that's the best person, I'd say. Yeah, fabulous. Uh, Jane... We've just let time run on. I'm sorry we haven't got to all of our questions today, but it's been absolutely fascinating. How can people get hold of you then if they, you know, want to come and see an image? They want to come and see me. Um, I, I, my email address is jane, J-A-N-E, dot brook, B-R-O-O-K, at houseofcolour.co.uk. Um, I have a page on the House of Colour website. 
Um, you can uh, ring me on 07970293341. I'm on Instagram as Jane underscore the vibrant stylist. <laughs> and I also have a Facebook page, which is House of Colour Worcester, because I own that franchise. Ah, fantastic. So lots of ways that people can get in touch with you, Jay. Um, I think for those people that are listening in today, if you are on Zoom, next time you go, perhaps have a little look and see whether you stand out or whether maybe <laughs> Jane might be able to help you. I am beginning to give this a bit of thought now, Jane. I want to know hey, what season see. I am. <laughs> yes. You just need to come and see me, Marie. Once we're out of this, you come and see me. <laughs> Remind me, what's your phone number again, Jane? 07970-293-341. That's fabulous. Thank you so much for joining me today, Jane. Thank you for having me, Marie. I've really enjoyed it. It's been a blast. It's been fabulous. Thank you. Bye. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>